G'day, mole gamers. We're here to answer four words. Will sex sell it? And we're looking at Pro Fishing Challenge for the original Xbox. So, is sex required to sell this game? Let's take a look. Now, the thing about Pro Fishing Challenge is, we say will sex sell it because they put this picture on the cover of this chica sitting there in a two-piece. Now, coming from Minnesota, we have a lot of fishers in the state, and I've never seen a serious woman fishing wearing a two-piece. Usually they're wearing a life jacket, some protective gear, stuff like that, so they don't get hooks caught and face anything. But they put some someone looking like a floozy sitting there on the cover. So it's obvious they're trying to take and say, well, you look like a sucker. Come, check out this hot chick, buy this game without knowing anything about it, and hey, maybe it's something you'll like. Come on, you know you're horny and depraved. Check it out. Yeah, but no, 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 no. That's not why you sell games. You sell games because they're fun, they're good, they're going to be something people will enjoy. That's why you market a game. So is this game able to stand on its own? Well, that's what we're here to find out. Now, morally, I should say up front that in addition to the cover, they also make it so when you create a female character, she's going to be showing some cleavage and stuff like that, wearing uh, slightly more revealing clothing than an actual professional fisherwoman would do. So, hey guys, I know where you're trying to go with this, but... Horny gaming aside, this is actually a fishing game. The majority of my time is going to be spent in a boat casting line. And that's where the gameplay steps in. Because, yes, you sit there, you... And then you wait. And you slowly reel it in with the R trigger. And if you press too fast, you put too much strain on the line, which means it can break. If you go too slow, the fish don't notice it and just assume it's going by the current. Whatever. So you have to you have to manage your line tensile strength stuff like that. You also have to make sure that you're casting far enough. You also have to make sure you have the right bait. And when you actually get a fish, it makes you go through this like sequence of sequence of uh, directions on the on the D-pad. You're sitting there and it's like up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right. You know, while you're trying to actually reel it in. So it, it, it's just your standard fishing game, but it's addictive. I can't explain why, but this is actually an addictive game because you're always sitting there, one more cast, one more cast. I can do better. I can reel that guy in. I can get a bigger fish. My wife and I were sitting there and we actually recorded this. So some of the gameplay is my wife, some of it's me. And we're sitting there and we're like, ah, we should probably quit. Look at the watch. It's been three hours. We were supposed to play for 20 minutes. Dang. Yeah, so the game is highly addictive, and I can't explain why. Now, back in the day, though, this did have online play. And if you have an Xbox or Xbox 360, at classic Xbox, by the way, you could have played on live against other people in tournaments and whatnot. That's gone. Uh, don't even worry about that anymore. I have to mention it only because it says on the box. Uh, but what is what is working with this game is, like I said, it's, it's strangely addictive. I just don't like travel. Because for some reason, for you to travel from point A to point B on the lake with your first boat takes forever. Now, I've actually piloted watercraft. Like I said, Minnesota, land of 10,000 lakes, and uh, 50,000 fishermen, I want to say. Boats, even, even a rowboat with a small three horsepower seems to move faster than what you're doing with your initial boat. Now, you have to save up, get the speedboat, whatever else. Say la vie. I understand. The game's trying to make it challenging, so you play more, and you want to update and grow. I understand. But it gets annoying at the beginning, so, hey. Nevertheless, though, from a gamer's standpoint, we do recommend this game. This game can stand on its own as an addictive fishing title. It's a lot more fun than being some drunkard in a boat sitting there, passing another one. <laughs> nope. But it's, 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 it's weirdly addicting. Morally speaking, yes, the cover may be offensive to some people because it is a woman in a two-piece. The fact that women wear more revealing fishing gear uh, than what actually what women actually wear in a fishing challenge, a pro fishing challenge, that may be offensive. And, of course, the fact that you're fishing, uh, it's catch and release, but you are fishing. And that may be offensive to some people. So, hey, if you have issues with any of that, you may not want your kids playing it. 
Nevertheless, though, we are The Moral Gamer. If you're watching us on YouTube, please subscribe. Hey, and on our website, which we have more links below on YouTube, we have more reviews, we have commentaries, we have playthroughs, even discussions, and outtakes from some of these, which are, <laughs> we get some pretty weird outtakes since we do this all in one shot. So check us out, themoralgamer.com, in the links below.